eternal and almighty God, that we gather here on this beautiful day that you have made, a day that we've never seen before, and a day that we'll never see again. We're grateful, eternal God, that you have brought us here to celebrate, to celebrate the life of Sister Barbara Mullen. We come, eternal God, acknowledging with you we can do all things. And as we lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you, we invoke your presence to be with us as we come to glorify you for the life, for the legacy, and all the love that we have experienced through your child, Sister Edwina Barbara Palmer. Thank you, God, for this moment of sharing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we sat to our feet, our hymn of praise this morning can be found as the family members continue to remain seated. It's a song of acknowledging that all of our help comes from the Lord. It's found on page 504 in our hymnal entitled Blessed Assurance.
was her story, and that was her song. Some trust in the lotto, some trust in gambling, but she trusted in the Lord. Amen. 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 Those who trust in the Lord, we can rejoice what? in all things. David declares, I'd rather be than I'm in the house of my God than the dwelling of the tent of wickedness. Today is a day of celebration as we celebrate this woman of God that knew God in the parking of her sins. So let's praise the Lord. her legacy and love, and we have several clergy persons across this great branch of Zion, and we're excited to have persons from the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. Reverend Julie Elmore Jr., who is on the ministerial staff, and those who are affiliated with the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. Our beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. Amen? Amen. And along with him, we have persons on our ministerial staff, who will also participate in our celebration of life. We'll now have a scripture reading by uh, Reverend Dr. Khalil uh, Meshach Khalil, who will read both the Old Testament and the New, followed by our prayer of comfort, which will be rendered by Reverend Dr. John Walker, who serves on the ministerial staff here at Conti. And then we'll have a musical selection by our bereavement choir. Let us continue to worship as listen. Our Old Testament reading is found in Psalm 34, verses 1 through 4. Psalm 34, verses 1 through 4. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Amen. Amen. The New Testament reading comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6, verses 9-13. After this matter, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Most holy and righteous God, almighty and everlasting God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have assembled here today by your grace and your mercy. You have allowed us to cross over the threshold into the day and to assemble in this place for the purpose of the home going service of this moment. Father God, we just ask that you will hear our prayer and that you will grant comfort unto us. Lord God, we ask that you look down upon this family who now has a void in it, but let them know, Heavenly Father, that there is no void that you cannot feel. So just let them know that they just put their trust in you and call upon you, even in the weeks and days, months to come, that when the loneliness come upon them, if they would but just turn to you and just talk with you, that everything will be all right. Father God, bless each one of them individually, Lord God, that they will be a comfort for each other, that they will reach out and, and touch one another in such a way that they would inspire them to continue on and to continue to work in the way in which they were taught, Lord God. And bless the Son, Father God, that they will be supportive and, and be supportive not only of themselves, but in supportive of the dad. And Lord God, their friends, friends who have gathered here today, but in weeks to come, they will be assembled in various places. Touch their hearts, O oh Heavenly Father, that they would remember a word, a phone call, a visit, anything that would help encourage and, 
and help to overcome the loneliness that may be felt by the family. Father, we look to you because you are the God that can do all things. We pray, oh, Heavenly Father, that you're, you're looking into the hearts of your people. So we ask that you would touch us all. Touch us, oh, Heavenly Father, that we will, from this day forward, will look at you in a different lane. lane. Look at you in such a way, oh, Heavenly Father, that we can walk in a newness of life. So bless us, Lord. Bless the service. Bless the service that the messenger, Lord God, will give us some food to feast on as we go and continue our Christian walk. So, Lord God, we look to you for all these things. And we count it a joy, we count it a blessing, and we count it done. And we count this, and we ask this, and we consider it done in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who is our Savior. And all his people say, Amen. 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 Amen.
knowing that the one we love is home now, free, at peace in the presence of God. We love and worship. In the loss of your mother with sympathy. Wayne, there's so much that should be said at this time, but no words seem adequate. Just hope you know you're being thought about and being cared about. I hope you find special comfort in knowing that your mother and all she meant to you will remain in your heart forever. We will be praying for you. Love, Joanne and Wiley Martin. To the Malkin family, this letter is to express condolences to the family of Barbara and Lena Malkin, affectionately known as Malkin by her friends and co-workers. Malkin and I were co-workers and friends for many years, and I was saddened to hear her passing. Please know that God is with you at this time, and that he will see you through. God bless you all. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Love, Celestial Union, amen. To the Malkin family, I would like to extend my sincere condolences in the loss of your mother, your wife, and your grandmother. She has been a saintly soul, and I do know that she will be greatly missed, but earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot give. And that's from Reverend Cyril Easton, former pastor at the Amazon Church. To the family of the late sister, Edwina Barbara Malkin. For whether we live, we live to the Lord, and whether we die, we die to the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Romans 14, 8. The ministers, officers, and members of Mount Pleasant Baptist Church join you in celebrating the life and homegoing of your loved one. We extend our heartfelt sympathy to each of you. While death remains a mystery, the death and breath of our Savior's love is not. He is able to do what no other power can do. He has the power to heal the broken heart and give peace to the troubled mind. Draw close to him, and he will draw close to you. Family, we encourage you to find solace in the abundance of wonderful memories that your loved one leaves to cherish, and know that blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. That's Matthew 5, 4. God has his arms of protection and peace around you today and always. The Mount Pleasant Church family is praying for you. With sympathy and compassion, Reverend Terry Schreeder Pastor, Sister Douglas Church Clerk. Dear Mr. David Walker and family, the members and officers of Kind T.A. Zion Church extend to you and your family our heartfelt sympathy upon the passing of your wife, mother, and grandmother, Mrs. Edwina Farber Malkin. It is our prayer that you will find comfort and consolation in the words of Apostle Peter who said, Cast your burdens on him because he cares for you. Know that as you share with one another the wonderful memories that you've experienced together, Sister Barbara's spirit will continue to live on. During this celebration of life service today, may the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ encourage you as you reflect upon your loved one's legacy, life, and love. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for her long life of loving you and all that she meant to you and to her friends and to her family. In closing, may the knowledge and confidence of these scriptures offer our most heartfelt sympathy. Please <coughs> know that we are praying for you all and we are confident as you diligently seek the Lord, he will continue to strengthen you day by day. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say on the Lord, Psalm 27, verse 14, in his service, Reverend Dr. Murrow Bowen, pastor of Kansi A. Church. 
We have official acknowledgments and they will take place in this order, beginning with uh, Sister Toller, who was a class leader for Sister Barbara Walken, followed by Reverend Dr. <coughs> Jim Walker, who served on the ministerial staff. And then we'll have a special acknowledgment by her last born son, Gregory, the youngest of the Amen. Our membership is divided into classes, and I was the class leader for the Morgan family. Barbara and I had a, a very good relationship because I could always call on she and David, and they always responded to my call. Four years ago this month, my husband passed. Barbara called me and she said, I have something I'm going to give to you which will bring you some consolation. And it's called Ascension. And I wanted to share this with the family, and especially to David. And if I go while you still here, know that I live on by breaking to a different measure than having been available. You cannot see me. You will not see me, so you must have faith. I wait for the time when we can sort together again both aware of each other. Until then, live your life to its fullest. And when you need me, just whisper my name in your heart. I will hear you. Thank you. Amen. In the life of the church, you have people of all kinds. Some like to be up front, be heard and seen. Some are very extrovert. Some are very aggressive. And some just like to sit back and do what they can do and keep it to themselves. Sister Malcolm was one who supported the programs of this church over the years. And many people do not know the contributions that she has made to the success of the various programs. She wasn't one that would like to stick her chest out, pat herself on the back, or get accolades from people. She just wanted to see things done. And she would support them behind the scenes. What's the message here? What's the lesson? Is that you can do good and you know the Bible say, don't let your left hand know what your right hand doing. And don't be like the Pharisees who stand over there and, and they make a lot of noise, chattering and saying and meaning nothing. So the lesson is for us is that we can do likewise and as Sister Malkin. Support the programs of your various churches. Be good Christians by supporting them quietly. And what you do in secret. God will will reward you over there.
Parents really let go of their children. So children let go of them. They move on. They move away. The moment that used to define them, a mother's approval, a father's nod, are covered by moments of their own accomplishments. It is not until much later, as their hair grays and their muscles weaken, that children understand that their stories and all their accomplishments sit below the stories of their mothers and fathers, like stones sending the water of their lives. Life has to end. Love doesn't. Don't cry for what you lost. Smile for what you had. Smile for 60 years of marriage. Smile for Christmas toys and crayon books separated on each end of the couch for each of us. Smile for Marshall Hall and for cartoons before the movies at the drive-ins. Smile for picnics at Fort DuPont Park in the river. Smile for a long, smile for lifelong commitments to one man and five sons. Smile for all the times she made sure we were safe and to call if we were going out of town. To give the flight number and phone number where we would be reached. So she would know we were safe. She was always so concerned about her boys. She loved her boys so very much. So smile when the economic recession hit in 2010 when mom helped carry me through those tough times. In one of her letters, she wrote, Dear Greg, just a little something to help you and kill the pain. Amen. <laughs> if you need more, call. Call when you are short in time. Love, mom and dad. Amen. Smile on bad weather days when mom would call just to make sure we were all okay. Like this message she left.